But we have a problem. We are part of the problem. And only we could solve the problem. Let me give you guys Gambia's report card on a prosperity index. For some of you guys that don't know, something you should look at. When it comes to economic quality, Gambia is ranked 150th out of 167. When it comes to education, Gambia is ranked 142nd out of 167. When it comes to living conditions, Gambia is ranked 129 out of 167. When it comes to health, we are ranked 139 out of 167. When it comes to infrastructure and market access, we are ranked 135th out of 167. Oh, but when it comes to social capital, we're ranked 64th. Happy-go-lucky nation. We have a problem. We are part of the problem, and only we could fix the problem. You can't speak about economic development as a black nation without understanding the history of economic development as black people. And oftentimes, as African sons and daughters, 1960s was an interesting time in the world. In the USA, you had an undercurrent of institutions and social organizations like the Black Panther Party, that from the outside looking in, you could hear individuals like Hugh P. Newton, Bobby Seals, Fred Hampton. If you're asked to make a commitment at the age of 20, and you say you're too young to die, then you're dead already. If you dare to struggle, you dare to win. If you dare not to struggle, then God damn it, you don't deserve to win. Entrepreneurship is a jihad. You know why I use the word jihad? There was a core belief system that people that were fighting in the name of God or fighting in the name of an idea, that you are willing to put everything on the line because you have the responsibility to do something that you're willing to die for. And especially in Gambia, we know you have to be physically, mentally, spiritually prepared to become an entrepreneur. It's sexy though, because a lot of people could see you and think you've arrived when you're just getting started. Your ideas are nice, but your ideals as a human being matter more. You have to have a discipline strong enough to overcome the denials, because they're coming. You guys are pitching today, I'm still pitching. Rain or shine. Your consistency has to be stronger than other people's complacency. And your why has to be so much stronger than a lot of people that are gonna look at you and say, why you? I think every country, four pillars, entrepreneurship, LLC, land, labor, capital. When it comes to how nations are built, is how fast could you grow the workforce and how efficient from a productivity standpoint can you grow the workforce? But I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper because we also have a problem of unemployment, right? The percentage fluctuates like the weather. There's unemployment, there's underemployment. Gambians take home $10,000 a year a month. That means your gross salary, if you are doing things the right way, by paying government taxes, by paying social security, that person's gross salary is about $13,000 a year. How many Gambians take home $13,000 a year? Is it a lot? How do I know? I did a transportation burden assessment for my company to see how much were my employees paying to get to work. On average, $1,000 to $1,500 a year. Subtract that from $10,000 a year. Some people may have relatives, dependents. You may give them $1,000 to $2,000 a year because it's a responsibility that you have. 
They're proud of you because you have that job that you're earning $10,000. $2,000 is gone. We're at $3,500, right? Even if you just spend $50 a day on food times 30, what's the total? $1,500. Is that living good, $50? So that's a bare minimum. You take $1,500, put it on top of the $3,500. Where are we? $4,500. So utilities, data, credit. Even if you spend $1,000, add that to it, where we at? I haven't added rent. Where in Gambia now could you get decent living for $5,000 a month? Most young Gambians don't even have a contract. Most Gamb You know why most companies like paying you cash and not a contract? Because they don't want to contribute to your retirement. They don't want to pay taxes. They know somebody at GRA who they'll rather give $20,000 a month than put in $2,000 in your retirement payment. Our system accepts it, but I'll speak on that a little bit. So underemployment, rampant. And those are the ones who have a job. But the last you, that's uncomfortable, but we're going to talk about it. Being unemployable. Unemployable from a talent, skill set, capacity, discipline standpoint. We got, we have that. It's uncomfortable what I'm telling you because I see it. I used to think I've lived it. I have 75 employees. In three years, I've had over 160 employees. Majority of our young people are unemployable. Because we have a school system that for every 100 people that pass through our school system, only 4%, 4 out of 100 are eligible to go to university. Every entrepreneur has stories for days about no matter how much they want to help young Gambians. We are so behind as a nation and we are so unskilled as a nation. Please travel around the coast and you'll see for yourself. Because most places, the advantage they have in their economy is they don't have a high pool of talent that are unemployable. Their literacy rate is higher, their capacity is higher, they take more initiative, their cultural setting, they care more about economic growth than social capital. Gambia cares more about social capital than economic growth. That's the reality you guys are gonna face. And all of you guys are key man risk when it comes to a business. Because if I die tomorrow, my biggest fear is Inobrex would not live. And the journey is so hard, most people that know me know that I didn't start the journey alone. Because for everyone Ismail Abaji, everyone Malik Khan that you see, every Binta that you see, there's nine that this country ate up and spit out alive. Every single one. That's why I say it's a jihad. And those people leave and never come back. They have resentment that is as deep as the most venomous snake in Fajara. They see Gambia as a graveyard where they'll come back to live and die and get buried. Their sons and daughters have taken up identities that are non-Gambian, non-African. And Gambia is a nice place that's hot. They come, they don't understand the language. Every Kori Tobaski, they wear African outfits, take a picture. That's the identity of Gambia that they'll always have because Gambia is eating people that should be rolled out with rose petals and red carpet and spitting them out alive, which is why I'm going to talk about the role of our system. And that's why it's difficult, especially for us that are in the USA. It's not nice to brag about Okay, yeah, sure. I had a job that I was making $10,000 every month, every two weeks. To this day, every day in Gambia that I'm here, every two weeks in Gambia, I'm missing out on $5,000 U.S. dollars. I don't want to brag about that. But that's why no matter people, how big your idea is, who you are is going to determine is if this country is worth sacrificing for. Because I cannot do this when I'm 45. I cannot do this when I'm 50. I would not make it. So most people ask me, or they even think it's easy, but he knows. 
He knows the toll. He knows the sacrifice. And all of you guys, 10 years from now, maybe about five or 10% of you guys will still be in business. It'll have nothing to do with about your ideas. It'll have to do with your emotional capacity to go through a jihad. So if your why is not strong enough, pivot now before you start. Because there's entrepreneurship, but there's also entrepreneurship where you could be an entrepreneur within somebody's institution. You could help build somebody else's vision. And too many times in Gambia, we don't believe in incubation period as entrepreneurs. Malik and I talk about this all the time. Instant gratification has taken over the world where a lot of young entrepreneurs, it's comical when you see them and in your eyes they're unemployable, but they're ready to have a next startup company. We don't believe in apprenticeship. We don't believe in incubation. And if a child is born premature and they put them in an incubation chamber, why is that? Without that incubation chamber, they're going to die. Drill is an incubation. Some of you guys after drill should look in the mirror and say, I'm not ready yet. Let me go and work for Molly Khan for another five or 10 years. Let me call Shine and see if I could intern with her. Let me go to Tedla. But Gambia, we cycle through so many young people who are not ready. And if you tell them you're not ready, they think you're blocking their opportunity. And in this room, there's a lot of you guys that I do business with already, right? One conversation, I see what you're about. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. But the role of government, which is a sensitive topic, government is the people, by the way. I've had more people that have tried to stop in Overex, block in Overex, sabotage in Overex, that are not called Adam Abado, they're not called Jame, they're not called Hussein Rudaba. They're everyday people who work in government institutions that will look at me and ask, why you? Because there's somebody else who's not Gambian, who's giving them something that is worth blocking for. Also something you guys will face. The role of government is to be fertilizers and weed killers when it comes to economic development. Set the right environment for young entrepreneurs with good ideas, deserve the credit of having companies that last. You fertilize the ground by making sure there's access to capital, making sure there's legitimacy when it comes to taxes for young people, especially who want to hire people. Because the undercurrent of Gambia, part of the reason why economy grows is we're a consumer ec economy. We don't produce anything. So even the role of government that is supposed to be fertilizers and weed killers, we've mortgaged that responsibility away to foreign companies or donor institutions. It's nice, but that's also uncomfortable. Since when did we have to mortgage away the responsibility to cultivate the right environment to YEP? Nothing against YEP. They do a good job. But the difference between a government or an institution that acts as weed killers and fertilizers is, if it's the government, you have Ford, Boeing, General Motors, Apple, companies that the idea is so great in advancing the humanity of that people the system makes sure it never dies. On the flip side, the downside to mortgaging that responsibility away to our donors is, you could be on a billboard in the Gambia because you completed a donor-funded program, but the moment the funds run out or the donors have another priority, you still exist in an ecosystem that 10 years from now, you were a nice company that was on a billboard that died. How many companies have we seen since COVID and now that received donor funding through an accelerator or did something with they now? Dead. That's the role of government. The conduce environment is not conducive. Access to capital is, banking system is predatory. But as much as we want to sit and criticize the governments, the public also has a responsibility to grow the economy, the local ecosystem, because it's not Gambia, but the black dollar leaves the community faster than any other race in the world. There's a study in the USA that studied that the black dollar leaves black communities in six hours, in Jewish communities, 23 days, in Asian communities, 30 days. How fast does the Gambian dollar leave Gambia? 
You wake up, you buy bread and butter at the store, is the store Gambian. You buy credit, the company that you're buying credit for, is it owned by Gambians? The taxi driver is a Gambian. The supermarket is a Gambian. And it's not xenophobia. I don't want you to misconstrue. There's nothing against, capitalism is capitalism. But my thing is there's also an undercurrent of Gambian people who don't choose Gambian businesses, who are not conscious controllers of the economic power in this country. They choose companies that don't hire Gambians all the time. So even as a business owner, when people that support Innovrex, I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to pay somebody else's son or daughter, because it's not for me. So our public consumers also have to enable the environment where any company, if Nopal Jake has a processing facility in the Gambia and hiring 5,000 people, and every Gambian who walks into the store sees a Nopal Jake brand and another brand and chooses Nopal Jake, will never we don't need the government for that because consumers are more powerful than the government. I tell Malik all the time, 50% of my revenue comes from Gambians who don't live in the Gambia. If my business depended on the ecosystem, I would have died two years ago. So that's the truth, but also on the backdrop of that, we have to create ideas that are not less than. Because also Gambia has a lot of fool's goal. A lot of people who don't have no business being in entrepreneurship. The products are substandard. So if you guys are not working every single day to iterate your products to compete on a global level, you are not worthy of consumer support. So there's a balancing act to it. So if I want you guys to remember anything about the role of entrepreneurship when it comes to national development, we have to talk about it in a nuanced way and be honest with ourselves. And that honesty means you walk around with a map and a mirror. A map as in where do we want to go? Let's stop complaining about what's not right in the Gambia. There's an inherent brokenness to this country that's pervasive. It's always been there. But there's glimmers of hope every now and then that lets you know we just need to reach critical mass. So instead of being 135th, Gambia's population is small, where if we have 20,000 Gambians who care about nation first, who care about building products that could compete and go to scale at a global level, we could change Gambia faster than any nation in the world. And maybe that's the eternal optimist in me. But that's going to take a lot of courage. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice. It's going to take a lot of people who will choose purpose over profits. A lot of people who would mortgage away their legacy to not live to see the fruits of Nopal Jack but know that their sons and daughters will live in an ecosystem where we have multi-generational companies. So even if we sit down today and celebrate or look at people like Mohamed Ja, people like Papa Yuri of Unique Solutions, the average Gambian sees them where they are now. But these are Gambian stories of people who created in one of the most hardest places to create to get to where they are. You see Malik Khan's journey, every single person, and they started when they were your age. Papa Yusuf and I ran an internet cafe that I opened my first email, eastbaji at hotmail.com. Most people see unique solutions today, but they won't see your journeys. We like ready-made products. And they could see Nopal Jake on TV and then the entire Gambia thinks she's a millionaire already not knowing that she could go through months where her accounts are emptied, but she has employees that she has to pay. So we have a problem. We're part of the problem. But only you guys or us, we could fix it. If we want our economy to thrive, we have to take ownership of the entrepreneurship if you're ready. You have to sign a personal contract with yourself to be willing to enter a jihad. And then hope, advocate, consolidate, support. Then high tides, all boats rise. I have a philosophy at Innovrix that I urge you guys to use. If there's any two products and there's a Gambian entrepreneur, 
even if you allow them the grace of iteration process, do business with them and give them business. That is our responsibility. I thank you guys for your attention.